Hello my dear students! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is me once again, Teacher Teen, your science teacher for today. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science Heaven. Welcome to another vlog and welcome to quarter 3, module 6, week 6 for your science 7. And for today's lesson vlog, we're going to discuss about light. So, alam nyo ba kung anong light? And for the most essential learning competency for today's lesson, so you're going to explain the color and intensity of light in terms of its wave characteristics. Our topic for today, light. So, ano nga ba ang light? Ikaw, alam mo ba kung ano ibig sabihin ng light? Light is very important. For without light, plants can be able to produce food for us through photosynthesis. Alam naman natin na sa photosynthesis, nangangailangan dyan ng sunlight. At kung wala ngang light, hindi ito makakapag-produce ng pagkain. Sa araw-araw, kung wala rin light, makikita ba natin ang ginagawa natin? Hindi, di ba? So, pag pumapasok tayo sa loob ng kwarto na madilim, we have to turn on the lights for us to be able to uh, act quickly or to move quickly. Light comes from two different sources, the artificial and the natural. Siyempre, alam natin na kapag natural source of light, it is our sun. Ibig sabihin, ang sun hindi lang siya nagbibigay ng init sa atin, pero nagbibigay din ito ng liwanag. Yung ibang sources naman ng light na ginagamit natin sa bahay or kahit saan man tayo magpunta, meron tayong bulb, meron din tayong lamp, meron din tayong mga candles. Ito naman ang tinatawag natin na mga artificial source of light. During the Christmas season, people from different places love to visit different light shows. One of the gorgeous light attractions is the giant Christmas tree found in Cartilia ng Katipunan Monument in Manila. The giant Christmas lights are so attractive that people take selfies in the park. And the spectacular colored Christmas lights that move and change aim to ignite Christmas spirits. And this brought so much joy and relaxation to many tourists. Ayan, kaya diba tuwing Pasko, tuwang-tuwa tayo sa napakadaming maiilaw na Christmas lights at Christmas tree na nagbibigay at nagbibigay sigla naman sa atin during Christmas. At hindi lang ito doon, sa, hindi lang yung giant Christmas tree na meron doon sa Katipunan Monument in Manila. Pero kung nakapagawi din kayo sa parte ng Makati, doon naman sa Dancing Lights sa Ayala Festival, ng ano, Ayala Tri, sa Ayala Triangle Gardens ng Makati, meron doon Festival of Lights na talaga namang napakaganda. So kung familiar kayo, ito siya. Okay, so for your learning test number one, you have to answer the two different questions. Number one, is the light from Christmas tree natural or artificial? And number two, if it happens that you are watching the light show and a group of people taller than you stand before you or in front of you, would you still see the lights? Why? Let us define first light. So when we say light, Light is a wave that is both transverse and electromagnetic. So, hindi kagaya ng sound. Ang light, electromagnetic siya, na kaya niyong mag-travel sa vacuum. Diba? E-recall natin, ano nga pagkakaiba ng mechanical sa electromagnetic? 
So last time we discussed about the sound and sabi natin ang sabi natin na ang sound is mechanical wave ibig sabihin kailangan niya ng medium in order for it to propagate. Pero ang light ibig sabihin kahit wala siyang medium kaya niyang magpropagate, kaya niyang magtravel. Kaya nga sabi nga dito, uh, light unlike the sound, it is an electromagnetic wave that can travel even in a vacuum. It can also travel in straight lines as evidenced by shadows and eclipses. At Ang light, pwede rin naman siyang transverse waves wherein nagbabibrate siya perpendicular to the direction of the propagation. So now, pag-usapan naman natin what are the characteristics of light. So unahin natin ang intensity. So narinig nyo na rin ang intensity sa sound, di ba? So this time, sa intensity, ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng intensity? So when we say intensity, this is the amount of light produced by a light source. Kung minsan may nalilito tayo sa intensity at brightness kasi sometimes it is interchanged with the brightness but objectively measurable pero ang intensity mas ano siya mas na measure siya objectively at the rate at which the energy is delivered to a surface. Kumpara naman sa brightness. Okay, now, let us have the brightness. Okay, so kung kanina sabi natin, medyo parang nakakalito yung intensity at brightness kasi parang nagagamit siya, uh, pa, nagagamit silang dalawa in, in, in a word or minsan may kalituhan pagdating sa intensity and brightness. Pero when it comes to brightness, it is the subjective quality of light. Ibig sabihin, uh, nasa sa ating paningin kung siya ay masyado bang bright or masyadong hindi masyadong bright. Ano, ang intensity kasi, kumbaga may measurement talaga siya. Na may measure natin siya objectively. Pero ang brightness, depende siya sa perspective or sa perception ng isang tao. Ano, it depends on how someone is viewing the light. So, pwedeng para sa akin, ah, masyadong ma, masyadong bright yan. Hindi ko kaya yung ganang kataas yung brightness. Kaya nga, diba sa cellphone, uh, magkakaiba tayo ng brightness. Kagaya ko, ako gusto ko medyo dim lang yung light kasi ng cellphone. Kasi kapag masyado na napa-bright, ang sakit sa mata niya. Pero yung nanay ko, pag nakita ko yung cellphone niya, sobrang taas ng brightness. Kasi nga daw, para sa kanya ay, hindi pa yun masyado masakit sa mata. Kasi nga ay, um, dahil malabo ang mata, gusto talaga nila malinaw. Pero sa akin, gusto ko yung medyo dim. So, mataas na sa akin. Okay na sa akin yung ganung brightness. Alam niyo yun? So, kaya sabi natin, brightness is subjective quality of light. It depends on this, on someone's perception. However, in quantitative aspect, so yung brightness, na-express yan sa unit na tinatawag natin na CD or candela. Okay, next. Let us discuss about dispersion. So, have you heard the word dispersion? So, when we say dispersion, this is the phenomenon in which white light separates into its component colors. So, you must remember that white light undergoes dispersion through a prism. Okay, so kahit yung prism, pag tinamaan siya ng ilaw, so ano yung napapansin yung reflection niya? Or ano yung napapansin niya dun sa, uh, di ba parang iba-iba't ibang color na rainbow colors yung makikita natin? Or kahit yung ball pen niya, yung panda, so itapat niyo lang siya sa ilaw. Di ba parang minsan may nakikita kayo na, kasi ang di ba yung panda na lalagyan ng ball pen, para siyang prism din, kulay white siya. So pag tinapat natin siya sa, natapatan siya ng ilaw, so ang tendency niyan, uh, parang kita natin na, ay parang may iba't ibang kulay siya na parang Roy G. Bib, na parang color ng rainbow. So, ang tawag natin doon is dispersion. Dispersion, ang sabi natin, it's a phenomenon in which white light separates into its component parts. Kaya nga yung prism, tsaka yung, takip, yung bahayan, yung case, ano ba yung tawag doon? Yung ball pen, yung pag tinanggal natin yung loob, tapos di ba white siya. So, yan. Makikita natin na iba't iba yung color pa yun pala niya pag pinamaan siya ng light. So, yung ganitong dispersion, na-discover yan ni Sir Isaac Newton during 1666. And then, si... Ito si Isaac Newton. Ayan. Pero si Christian Huygens... He Christian Huygens postulated that the more light was bent or refracted by a substance or material, the slower it moved while traversing across that material. Max Planck postulated that electromagnetic radiation is a form of energy with both wave-like and particle-like properties. Visible light is a part of this radiation and can be described in terms of its frequency and wavelength. 
The theory of electromagnetic radiation was demonstrated by James Clark Maxwell and that electric and magnetic fields travel through space as waves moving at the speed of light. Okay, so yun nakikita nyo dito sa itsura. Sa picture na to, so this is uh, illustration that shows the dispersion of light. Makikita nyo na may prism. Nung tinamaan siya ng white light, tingnan nyo yung components ng white light na to, ng light na to. Diba? The Roy J. Babe. Makikita natin dyan yung kulay ng red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. The seven colors include the red, the orange, the yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So, these are the colors of the rainbow. Okay, among the seven colors, makikita natin na ang violet ang may pinakamataas na frequency, pero siya naman ang may pinakamaiksing wavelength. While yung red, siya yung may pinakamababang frequency, but the lowest wavelength. So, very obvious here na yung frequency ng light is directly related to the wavelength. As the frequency increases, the wavelength decreases. And these are the reasons why red colors have been used mainly as color in various commercial logos. Okay class, so tandaan nyo, ito yung kailangan nyo malaman when it comes to the colors that we perceive. So araw-araw, syempre nakakakita tayo ng color. So, yung kulay na nakikita natin sa bawat object ay depende yan sa nare-reflect at na-absorb ng white light. So, the color, of the, the color of the object that we see depends on the light reflected. Pwede sa case ng mga opaque materials or sa mga tinatransmit naman in case of the transparent materials that reaches our eyes. So, I-recall natin yung visible spectrum that consists of different frequencies. Di ba meron tayong Roy G. Beam? Yun yung binubuo na components ng white light. Ngayon, ano ang ibig sabihin nito? Kagaya na lang ng mga green leaves, ng mga halaman. Ano bang kulay ng halaman? Siyempre, sabihin natin, it's color green. Pero bakit nga ba siya color green? Siyempre, ang sabihin din natin dyan, because of the chlorophyll, ma'am. It's the green pigment of the plant. So, tama naman. Pero, ano nga ba ang ginagawa ng chlorophyll? So, yung chlorophyll, ito yung nagbibigay ng kulay green sa halaman dahil ang chlorophyll ay hindi siya nakakapag-absorb ng green light. Ibig sabihin, or ng green frequency. Lahat na na-absorb ng chlorophyll ay lahat ng kulay except sa green. So, kung ano yung hindi na-absorb na ng chlorophyll, which is yung green, hindi niya na-absorb yun. Ang na-absorb niya lang is lahat ng kulay except sa green. So, ibig sabihin yung red, yung orange, yung yellow, yung blue, yung indigo, and violet. Yun yung na-absorb niya except for the green. Kung ano yung hindi niya na-absorb, yun naman ang nare-reflect niya at yun yung nakikita natin. So, yun yung sinasabi doon sa statement kanina na the, the color of light that we see depends on the light reflected that reaches our eyes. So, eh, ano yun, ma'am? Kunwari, may nakita naman akong color black. Ibig sabihin yan, hindi na-absorb niya yung black. No. Kaya naman siya naging black, ibig sabihin, na-absorb niya lahat ng kulay. Kaya, ang magiging color niyan is black. How about sa color black and white? Paano naman po yun? So, yung black naman, nakaka nakikita at napaperceive ng mata natin yung color black kasi ibig sabihin yung object na yun is na-absorb niya lahat ng kulay, lahat ng frequency from red to violet. So, pag na-absorb niya lahat yan, ang magre-reflect is black. Pero, kung hindi naman niya na-absorb lahat ng kulay, magre-reflect naman is color white. Okay, so in your learning task number two, so you have to determine which frequency of light will be reflected and what color will be seen by the observer. Sabi nga natin kanina, di ba, kung ano yung hindi niya na-absorb, ibig sabihin, yun yung magre-reflect at yun ang makikita ng ating mga mata. So this is picture number one. So as you can see, meron tayo dyang bubong ng bahay. So natamaan siya ng ilaw, so light ray from the sun. So, nung natamaan siya ng light, ang na-absorb nung, nung roof ay orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So, 
Ang tanong dyan ay, the roof reflects blank. Okay, alin dyan ang color na hindi niya na-absorb? Dahil na-absorb niya yung orange, yung yellow, yung green, yung blue, indigo, and violet. Ayan, very good. So, anong nawawala siya? Red. So, ibig sabihin, ang ma-perceive natin at ang ma-reflect ng roof ay color red at yun ang makikita ng ating mga mata. Okay, next picture. From this example, ang na-absorb naman ng roof ay red, orange, blue, indigo, and violet. So, alin dyan ang hindi niya na-absorb? Wala ang green, wala ang yellow. So, ibig sabihin, yung color yellow green, siya yung magre-reflect doon sa roof at yan ang makikita ng ating mata. Very good! This is the end of our lesson vlog for week 6. I hope you learned something from this vlog. This is me once again, Teacher Tia. And thank you for watching this vlog. See you again next week sa ating pagpapatuloy ng lesson vlog sa Science 7. So, I hope if you, uh, if this video helped you, so kindly uh, subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science 7. Bye!